storm components now uh, so guys uh, when it comes to look at storm there are two different ways of uh, looking at storm one is from the execution perspective what are the different players okay so uh, what really happens when you submit your uh, you know storm uh, jar uh, into your cluster what really happens there and what are the components responsible for what that is first thing second is from the uh, exact code execution perspective so we will be having uh, we, we will be going to have the look from these two angles altogether so when i say from code perspective what are the players at that time our focus would not be on numbers uh, nodes or zookeeper nodes on uh, or on the supervisor nodes at that time our focus is going to be on what exactly is spout what exactly is bold what exactly uh, are the groupings and what exactly are the kind of groupings which are available right so we'll be talking about those things in bit more detail now uh, coming to uh, storm uh, cluster so basically there are three different kinds of nodes one is the nimbus node the other so nimbus node is going to be only one within your cluster it's like uh, you know in hadoop parlance probably it is something like the name node right it's going to be only one and by the way it is in parallels with hadoop 1.0 not with hadoop 2.0 next uh, zookeeper nodes see zookeeper is a distributed coordination service altogether okay so when when we say about distributed coordination service it's all about uh, that uh, your zookeeper uh, so uh, I, I'll, I'll just take the example of uh, again storm itself right so you have uh, a nimbus node which is running you have a lot of supervisor nodes which are running or even if you do not take the example of storm let's take the example of any other distributed system right uh, for example uh, there are uh, some uh, uh, systems like hbase and all which are having uh, you know which are executed across different uh, machines altogether and there are different kinds of players right so uh, their uh, region server has a different responsibility altogether their the uh, uh, HBase master is going to have a different responsibility altogether and all of them are going to have their own replicas also right so HBase master is going to have its own replica the region servers are definitely going to have the data replica and all that stuff now this looks good this looks good completely but when it comes to work as in you know in a synchronous manner or in harmony then uh, so if there are uh, replicas of a master at one time there can be only one master there cannot be many masters in your system right this is this is uh, I, I mean you do not really need to be the master of uh, uh, or i would say it, it's a very common sense kind of thing right a, at one point of time there can be only one master there cannot be many entry points in your system this is the basic design rule for any other uh, for any system itself right so uh, things look good when you are working in a centralized kind of a system but when you go for a distributed kind of a system who would decide that out of these for you know five different replicas this particular person is a master who would decide this right even if you somehow have configured the rules right uh, but again you might have to keep changing them right so uh, that is kind of cumbersome task right the other other thing would be let's say your master or whatever uh, I'm just taking one simple example here okay one of the masters of your system it just dies right it just dies now uh, when I say it dies it, it it's all about your machine goes down right or it just crashed altogether now you have two other replicas also or whatever n number of replicas of the same master which are again running now the you're back to the same question leader selection so now this now that your node number one is down right which is which was the master node there are node two and node three which one should take the responsibility of being master now right so kind of uh, conflict resolution kind of uh, uh, you know leader selection altogether now this was this is one one kind of aspect right the other aspect is uh, 
Now about the slave systems altogether. So you have a lot of uh, you know slave systems which are uh, residing. And guys, this discussion which which I am saying right about master systems, about slave systems and all, it has nothing to do with Hadoop. It has nothing to do with Storm. This is the generic uh, uh, distributed system altogether, right? Now uh, about those those systems, right, which are uh, your uh, you know uh, slave systems and distributed uh, there. They must be maintaining some sort of states altogether, right? Uh, of course, why exactly are they distributed? Because you must be spawning your distributed processes. So the states of the processes, the states of the machines themselves, right? What exactly is their status altogether, right? Their configuration settings and all. So they must be published. If you, they, uh, I mean, they must be published at the same time. They, if the, the more distributed they are. The lesser is the risk of single point of failure, right? So now these are these are the cases, right? These these are the kind of uh, scenarios, or these are the kind of uh, things which will you will never ever encounter in a single or in a centralized kind of a system. You will see these kind of challenges only and only in the distributed systems, right? Zookeeper is the answer for it. Zookeeper does exactly what I have said, exactly whatever. Are the problem statements which I gave to you, right? Uh, like, uh, so in case of edge base, because I have seen that many of you, uh, or not many, some of you uh, are from Hadoop background. Definitely, you would be able to recall, right? That uh, in in the case of edge base also, since it's a distributed system altogether, you have multiple copies of uh, uh, you know edge base masters which are running. But at one point of time, only one HBase master. So if you can recall, there was HBase master and the zookeeper sitting at the same level altogether. So zookeeper is the one which will tell you or which will direct a client request to one specific HBase master at a time. From there only it goes to the root table and things like that. I'm not going into those details right now, right? That is point one. Then second. Uh, if that dies, which which exactly is the next edge base master? So that is conflict resolution about different edge base uh, edge region servers and all. So as soon as their meta information changes and uh, the ranges or the uh, regions, right, the table regions and all their information changes, those kind of things are stored at each and every node or each and every machine altogether, right? So Zookeeper is something which is distributed across. All the machines in your cluster, okay. So Zookeeper has to be installed across all of the machines in your cluster for the simple reason that it just keeps all of the states within itself and keeps it published, okay. So it is just the another wrapper which is running on the top of your distributed system, okay. So I don't know because uh, not many of you uh, have attended, uh, uh, you know, those Hadoop. Uh, batches uh, which I have taken earlier but yes we used to have this discussion that why only HBase uses Zookeeper why why not Hadoop as such uses Zookeeper right because we, you talk you never heard about Zookeeper right when when you were uh, uh, reading Hadoop so I'm not going into this discussion because that would be more of a Hadoop discussion and I, I don't want to do that right now but it's a kind of question think about it <laughs> this is my job also to you know keep planting the questions and uh, uh, you know keep you uh, just uh, on your toes to find out the answers if not we can probably discuss also a bit later uh, you know at the end of the class so now this zookeeper nodes as right now you are seeing it's like three kind of thing right and your supervisors are uh, too many supervisors right for the sake of simplicity just a sec so uh, for the sake of simplicity just assume that these zookeeper nodes are going to be installed on each and every machine okay and this in in the terms of uh, uh, you know storm itself zookeeper is the one which is going to do the state management for you when i say state management state management of your cluster point 1 state management of your entire topology so right now you do not know about topology. Don't worry, we'll we'll come to that. Next are the supervisor nodes themselves. So when it comes to the supervisors, see guys, what happens is, uh, whatever storm job you write, 
and you submit it, you submit it one time, right? You, as, as you can recall from yesterday, right? You submit it one time and then it keeps running forever, right? Now, uh, do you think that Nimbus, who is the master, is going to monitor it all the times or is, gonna, is going to keep them running all the time? What, what do you think is, is, uh, can be the probable thing? Just, just asking all of you guys, right? The reason is I do not want to teach you. I am not here to teach you. I am here to uh, help you to derive, right? So do you think uh, uh, Storm, uh, I mean Nimbus is going to be responsible to keep them executing again and again? No, right? The obvious answer is no. Why? Because then you are making Nimbus as another job tracker who is overloaded, right guys? This, this is this this exactly is the kind of bottleneck, right? Which will which you are trying to make it. If if you say that Nimbus is going to be responsible for your programs to keep running, you know, forever in your system. So there have to be a different agent altogether, right? Right? Which which will be responsible to uh, which will be responsible to you know keep executing your task again and again. Those are called supervisors. Okay, those are called supervisors.